It's Mission Impossible and we are back here at Penguin Composites and I've had the boat for a little over a week and work as you can see is in progress even as we speak. That there, that person wielding the grinder is none other than the man of glass, David Mercer. Merce! Hey! What are you doing to my boat? You've, you've cut a big hole in it. Well, no, what we're going to do there, Nick, is you're going to fill that hole because yes. it's not required. Now, Dave, this is, what we are doing here fills a lot of people who own fiberglass boats with dread. You know, we are painting it and we're covering it, you know, putting holes back where there weren't holes and new holes and all this sort of stuff. But if you learn the art, it's very doable. Oh, yeah, no, no problem at all. It's a matter of just setting yourself up, getting the right gear. You can fix big holes in boats. All right, so what we'll do now is take you on a little step-by-step -step way of fixing a big hole in your boat. First stage we need to do this hole, Nick, is um, give it a good grind so the glass will stick to it. Look what Darren's got there is a bit of an off-cut of glass that we're going to glue underneath that um, hole that we have there. Yes. That'll allow the glass and that to stick to it. And this is special glue, That's and a, this makes it good as new? This is good as new. That's a methaculate type glue. Methaculate. Just pass that up there for me, Darren, thanks. So we'll just hold that there into position while that goes off. What's that? Gives us a solid platform for our fiberglass work to, to lay on then. Okay, next step we need to do is just put a little bit of, a little bit of fill just in that recess there. Mm -hmm. That just stops from matching. When we put some fiberglass in there, we don't actually get air underneath it. Right. That's basic. It's as simple as that. Okay. All this stuff, David, is available at your local DIY fillers and fiberglass. Yep. Or just slip into Penguin Composites. They'll yeah. certainly, certainly right. look after you for it. Next. Next, we would just cut some basically shapes of glass yep. to actually fulfill that. Glass fibre mat. Yep. So we'd have our resin. And what we normally do with these is just wet them out couple hours at a time. Well, this is serious stuff. Though. This is the serious sticky bit. So we'll just keep going like that. Yeah. Probably put another one in there. One of the things we need to do, and we have a little jig called a roller here. So we'll just roll that into that little cavity first that we had. That's the final coat there we need. Get all the air out of that. Best thing to do is try and keep your area that you're working in as clean as possible. Uh, obviously, it makes it a lot easier to uh, finish off. No, a bit of a mess there and a bit of a mess there. Though. That's why we need to make it as clean as possible. Yeah, I was just saying there's a bit of a mess there and a bit of a mess there. But... <laughs> Got a rag there for me, Darren. So this is what it looks like, Dave, after how long? Oh, probably an hour and a half, two hours. Right You'd right. like to be able to think that you okay. can leave it full. And the next process is what? Right, we've got to grind that and get it as smooth as we possibly can yes. to take a, a, a bit of filler for paint preparation. Would I use a sander or would I use a grinder? A grinder, sander, whatever you've got in your shed. You yeah. know, basically... You would use a grinder, but I would use a sander. Yeah. Okay, you grind it. Okay. I use the grinder to take the excess glass off. Now what I'll do now, I'll just grab a bit of um, coarse sandpaper and give it a bit of a touch up. And that is quite remarkable, David. It's, you know. That is back to at, as good as it's best. Um, it'd be a very good weld to get that close, wouldn't it, if you're working in metal? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so we've got the structural strength back in, but now we need to do something cosmetically. That's right. Obviously we're painting this boat, so we do need to prep the top of that. Yep. We have a, uh, a filler that we will actually wipe over that now. Yep. And let go off and prep for painting. Right. Basically what I've got here, Nick, is a, a product we use as a filler. Yep. It's a product called uh, Q-Cells. Yes. And then... And that just takes the paint, makes it feel nice and smooth. It just gives it something 
for us to uh, seek the painting yep. a lot easier. Okay, yeah. right up, go. Any tips and advice? Because this is something that a lot of people do with their glass filling. What um, what well, makes a good filling application? Make sure the um, area where you're going to fill it, it's all nice and clean. Yes. Um, and it's only a matter of just smearing a bit of filler over that. That's we just get good. a nice feel like that. Yep. Basically let that go off and she's ready for the painters to come in and have a crack at it. How long are you leaving your filler to go off? We probably wouldn't touch that till tomorrow. Okay, yeah. but as ever, there's another area on the boat and we'll show you how yeah, to sand we'll that back. we'll just go show you how to do that soon. Right Righto, Dave, uh, a little bit of a prep. You've got a repair underway here. Tell us your one tip for sanding boats. What is it? Okay, start with the coarse bit of sandpaper, yes. finish off with a light piece of sandpaper. Makes sense. But when you're doing the, the uh, repair, Make sure you overfill it a bit because this stuff will shrink back a bit yep. and it gives us something to sand back. Okay, all right. Well, you better hop into this. Show us that. your technique. Very important to have the correct safety view. Get out of it. This stuff here is reasonably soft to sand, so you can actually form it around your radiuses. Yeah, basically I'll finish with the coarse paper. It's uh, time to grab hold of the sander and finish it off. That's a beautiful feel done there. Repaired, ready for painting.